A very good evening to all our viewers and welcome to a brand new edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our News First Studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudan Nayak and let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. President says he will intervene to declare the Tripitakaya as a world heritage. Johnston claims that the UMP also wants to hold an election. Why did astrologer Sumana Dasa obtain a vehicle from a national carrier? One person killed while attempting to tame a wild elephant. Operations Director of the Anti-Corruption Force alleges that a group from the Sri Lanka Army arrived at his place last night. And now the story is in detail. The Tripitaka was declared a national heritage this morning. Tripitaka was declared as a national heritage today under the auspices of President Maitri Palasiri Sena at Matali Aluvihara Temple where it was first made available in written form. Mahanayaka Theros and Anunayaka Theros of the three sects and over 2,000 Theros were present at the event. The event was graced by ministers, Nilamis, public officers and many other dignitaries. The declaration of the Tripitakaya as a national heritage was presented to the Mahasangha by the head of state. Dhamma in Tripitakaya is very precious and its teachings as well. If it has been converted into a national heritage, then it is a great measure that has been taken by the President to protect the generation of 2,500 years further. There are certain views being spread in the country. Dhamma has been mispreached and corrupted in writing, teaching and sermons. We are glad that President and the government has taken steps to regulating the Tripitakaya. This will be one of the best incidences that took place during your regime. We as the Mahasangha would bless any religion and households including the President who took the leadership to commit this goodwill. May you be blessed from the sacred truth relic and the Jaya Shri Mahabodhi. Meanwhile, President Maitri Palasiri Sena also addressed the gathering. Writing that took place at this sacred land being a national heritage is the moment that all Buddhists and non-Buddhists, everyone else, should be happy about this. I would like to state before the Mahasangha that without the permission of the government, none can alter, translate or use Tirpitakaya for other purposes. Hereafter, only a panel of experts will be allowed to do that. I would like to mention that I will request the UNESCO to make this a world heritage. For that, I will get a statement from the United National Secretary General. Thereafter, a stamp was published after declaring the Tripitakaya as a national heritage. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe visited the Vishnu Devalaya in Devinwara today. The Prime Minister initially engaged in religious observances at the Devinwara Raja Mahaviharaya. The Minister of Finance and Mass Media, Mangala Samarvira, Daya Gamage and other parliamentarians were also present at the occasion. Thereafter, the group participated in religious observances at the Vishnu Kovil in Devinwara. We hope that the Prime Minister will be blessed with the health and power of the state to protect this country as a Buddhist country and move forward as one nation. A portrait drawn by a student in the area was presented to the Prime Minister following the event. Oh, 
Global Sri Lanka Forum convened a media briefing yesterday. What is happening now against the country is that constitution that has been made to divide this country and they are trying to pass it. Although Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singer go to all chief incumbents and say that he won't change the 19th Amendment, yet what he does is what TNA wants and what they want is to divide the country. Four main chief incumbents have already given letters stating that neither a new constitution nor an amendment is needed. Only if the executive presidency prevails, the country will be protected. A meeting of the representatives of the local government and provincial councils of the Kurunagal district was chaired by opposition leader Mahindra Rajpaksa. <laughs> This meeting was organized under the theme of Let's Prepare for the Victory in 2019. Several parliamentarians who represent the United People's Freedom Alliance were present at this event. Day before yesterday, Mangala Samarvira, during a conversation, has stated that they have to go for a general election soon. At this rate, they might reduce up to 60 to 65. If they go for an election soon, they might be able to secure around 80 to 82. We will raise both our hands and give them the consent. Let's go for a general election so that we can produce the most number of seats from a party to parliament in the history. They say that democracy was given and good governance was restored. So was there democracy? Elections and provincial council elections are not held yet. So was it the dictator who ended the war and held local government and provincial council elections? Sumandiran and Sambandan refused to have elections in those areas. Now they have been elected to those areas saying that they serve the areas. Tamil community should be given their rights. Government has taken away their rights. Development activities that we carried out within a short period of time is what's left in the north. They couldn't even build a single culvert. Since the political party that organized the meeting was not mentioned during the event, News First made inquiries from parliamentarian Andhra Pradesh and Ayapa. Sri Lanka Sri Lanka Perumana and Sri Lanka Freedom Party have the same propaganda. So we, including the opposition leader, participate in these meetings. So we don't need to know the name of the party. Anyone can participate. Astra Lajabe Gurwadhan informed the Sri Lankan Airlines Presidential Commission yesterday that Mihil Lanka had paid a loan of 8.2 million rupees for a vehicle which was gifted to astrologer Sumanadas Abegun Vardhana by former President Mahindra Rajapaksa in the year 2007. Astrologer Sumanadas Abegun Vardhana made the following statements today. I did not work for Sri Lankan Airlines. I worked as an active director at NSB for nearly eight years. On a day in July 2007, President Mahindra Rajapaksa called me and said that Mr. Sumit had a vehicle and asked me to take it. Afterwards, I was connected to his closest security officer, Neville Wanyarachi. I took the vehicle. It was not a big vehicle. The vehicle was an N16. At that point, I had a variety of cars including Mercedes-Benz, Audi and Peugeot. I also had gotten a vehicle from NSB. After the government changed on the 15th of January 2015, if my memory serves me right, I handed the vehicle over. There is no point in asking me that question. You should have been asking it for Mahindra Rajpaksa as it was he who gave me that vehicle. Who would ever say no when they are given a vehicle? Who will ever say that they cannot accept when a vehicle was given to them? United People's Freedom Alliance parliamentarian Nishant Bhutahitigama expressed the following views at a media briefing in Gaul today. Chandrika Bandaranayaka, who is well known for destroying the unity inside the party, is responsible for this. They have failed to at least enlist 10 members for their so-called organization formed to fulfill the needs of the United National Party. We will never allow them to fulfill their objectives by destroying the UNP under the leadership of some impractical leaders. Their intentions were to fulfill the needs of Rajita and those around him. They were offered lunch and refreshments at Minister Rajita Sena Ratna's residence because they got his job done. He is well known for destroying the unity inside the party. That is what he is planning to repeat. Operations Director of the Anti-Corruption Force Namal Kumar convened a media briefing in Warakapala today. 
At around 11 last night, I got a call from my father saying that few army officers had come to the house wearing civil clothes and tapped and asked to open the door. When I called the OIC of the Maha Oya police to know about this, this is what I got to know. Pani video ak dana gani mathe puluang kama lebuna. Arma sa mama na Amal Kumar. Mama gatte. Arre yeh re apne ke dar to kaurar ke ekla dinon khattiya. Main main police mein hoye police mein main army ke hoye ki. आह ओ मेजर के ने कोई मेजर के ने कहा मैं हाँ इधर एक आंदोलन किया इधर सब पुलिसी मत दूना रख जाओ ना पुलिसी मत किया हाँ हाँ तो रह रही है ना हाँ 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 ना मम्मा इन्हें वारक बोल गया ना एक और लोंटे ओ क्यों वारक बोल गया क्यों ऐसा ना टे आंदोलन किया क्यों नहीं सदा आप इसकी so the question that I have is that why is the army and the air force wanting to arrest me? There is no need to go to my house when I am not at home. I am going to inform this to the army and air force commanders in writing because the reason is that my parents are in Ampara. The entire country knows that I am in Warakapola. What I found out is that these men are from the Giritale police camp. So anyways, what I have to say is that I am not in Ampara. Do not bother them because I am here. They are very innocent people. They don't know anything about this. The turnover of the Kalamu Stock Exchange limited to 68.7 million rupees yesterday. It was the lowest in 10 years and better than only to 64.3 million recorded at the height of the war on the 28th of April 2009. News first made inquiries in this from Rajiv Bandar Naika, the Chief Executive Officer of the CSE. The Columbus Stock Exchange last Friday recorded a turnover of 68.6 uh, uh, million. Yes, it was a fairly low turnover and uh, it was a all-time low for the last 10 years. We are last had it in about 2009, a turnover of uh, this range. Of course, we wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just one day and uh, beginning of the and a slow start. Friday we saw very low volumes in the market. It's also no indication that this is either a trend or a cause for real concern. The market itself moved up both the All Share Price Index and the uh, S&P 20 Index. Uh, both indices moved up by 9 points and 15 points. So I think we really need to watch uh, how the market really will uh, uh, turn out in the in the coming weeks. Uh. However, according to the data revealed by the CSE, the Colombo Stock Exchange performed 6% less during the end of 2018 when compared with the same time frame the previous year. The drop in turnover comes after net foreign outflows followed with frantic foreign selling in the second half of 2018. Foreign selling as of the end of last year stood at 22.8 billion rupees, opposed to foreign buying the previous year at 17.7 .7 billion rupees. Data from the stock show that compared to 2017, net turnover had dropped to 199.4 billion rupees in 2018 against 220.6 billion in 2017. Following an event in Dambulna National Organizer of the Ceylon Farmers Federation, Namal Karuna Ratna also expressed the following views to the media. Uh, the stock market has had a massive downfall when compared to the past 10 years. The collapse of the stock market will negatively impact the economy of the country. The present Prime Minister and the Finance Minister Mangala Samaravita should be held responsible. Because this is taking place within their framework, they have not been able to prevent this from taking place. Lack of investor confidence in the market has also impacted this. <laughs> We will not be able to bring the stock market back to normal overnight. The President is now working closely with us. So with that hope, we can bring stability to the economy of the country and attract more investors. A video footage of a wild elephant attacking a person who approached it so is circulating on social media. The disease was a person who guided tourists on tours to see the roaming elephants on the Vehrigala border in the Yala Sector 3. He had descended off the jeep stating that he was able to tame the elephants. Despite this, the elephant charged ahead. The disease was a 41-year-old resident of Vali Mataagama Khataragama named L.A. Susanta. 
When we inquired about the incident from a senior official of the Yala National Park, it was revealed that the deceased person was under the influence of alcohol. Videos of this individual previously going into the vicinity of the wild elephants have been circulating the social media. It is illegal to travel on foot during wildlife tours in all national parks excluding the Horton Plains National Park and the Pigeon National Park. It is illegal to get down from the vehicle and idle around the national park. If we get to know of such an incident like that, we can take legal action against the individual involved. The people cannot get away from legal action saying that they were unaware of such a law. Also, I have a special message for everyone. As far as we are aware, there is not magic or rituals that can be used to tame these wild animals. It is advisable that you stay away from situations like this. Two people died in an accident that took place in Valikampitiya in Jayala. The accident occurred when a container truck that was transporting a stock of iron from Colombo to Ekala lost control and veered off the road. The police said that assistant driver died as a result of the accident, while the driver of the container who sustained severe injuries was admitted to the Ragama Teaching Hospital. <laughs> It was revealed that at the time of the accident, another container that was transporting goods had been stationed at the side of the road while the driver and the assistant were having tea at a roadside shop. The container that lost control collided with the station vehicle and two three-wheelers and crashed into a house. The police stated that the driver of the other vehicle also died in this accident. The deceased was a 32-year-old resident of Nelua Gaul. Sadavira Kapitapula village was pestered with the public today. The event was held on the auspices of Minister of Housing, Construction and Cultural Affairs, Sajid Premadasa. Under the Udaga Mana program, this is the 147th model village which was vested with the public. This village includes 24 houses and a cost of 1.8 million rupees has been incurred on this. While observing the village, a minister's attention was drawn to a dwelling which was inside the village. <laughs> Minister instructed officials to provide a house for the family residing in the dwelling. At a moment when the Tripitaka has been declared as a national heritage and this village been built under the name of the leader who led the Uvavellas uprising, how could we say that Buddhism is at danger? I clearly state that those people don't share the feeling of patriotism. It is shameful to say that the previous government had obtained 800,000 rupees to build houses for the armed forces who shed blood and their organs at the war. Is it fair? They made war heroes work while they brought down models from Russia and Kazakhstan to dance at these car races. Is it respecting Buddhism? Who are cardboard Buddhists? And who are the practical ones? Time has come where practical patriots should be recognized and not from the looks of them but from their actions. <laughs> President of the Mahabodhi Society, Venerable Barnagala Upadhi Sutera, celebrated his 69th birthday today by publishing his biography. The ceremony was graced by the Mahasangha, including Most Venerable Dr. Ittapane Dhamma Lankarathera and Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit. This book was named as Anjali Karaniyo. It was authored by Indian national Shakil Siddiqui. Due to the fact that I am associate venerable Theros like you and Buddhism being the living Dhamma of this country, it has my respect and love. When something small happens in this country by anyone, people living in westernized countries and Europe try to make a big issue out of it. They blame the country. I am saddened by this situation. <laughs> Today what I thought is that although it has been 69 years, there is more work to be done. For that I need another 69 years. When I take a look at the past, I am proud and delighted. When I take a look back to where I was in Barnagala, I feel like I have come a long way. 
I feel that many people have helped me to build the platform that I am on. This is what I treasure. Even if I lose everything one day, I know that I have my people around me. The suspect was arrested over the incident of setting ablaze the kennel with the Labrador inside in a house in Nigambo was bailed out on a shooty bail of 50,000 rupees. The decision was made after the suspect was produced before the Nigambo Magistrates Court. On the 31st of December 2018, Charlie, a Labrador, which was in its kennel at a house in Nigambo, was burnt alive. The Labrador succumbed to his injuries on the 1st of this month. The person suspected of burning Charlie, who was arrested, is a labourer in the area. A group led by the Nigambo Police Headquarters Inspector and the Divisional Crime Investigation Division are conducting further investigations. Meanwhile, animal rights activists held a protest opposite temple trees in support of preventing animal torture. The protesters held protests for nearly an hour and later handed over a petition to the Prime Minister's Public Relations Division. The petition includes the enacting of an Animal Violence Act and implementing awareness campaigns on animal violence. The group has planned to hold a similar protest opposite the Nigambu police tomorrow. Our only request is to enact the Animal Violence Act. During the past few months, around 10 to 15 cases on animal violence was reported. Many animals are tortured due to these inhumane acts. Even India has an animal law, but that does not happen in our country. Parliamentarian Kavinda Jayawardana also participated at the protest. As a government, we will take all necessary legal measures to tackle violence against animals. Many cases of violence against animals are reported. There is no law in Sri Lanka. What we expect from the Prime Minister is to enact the Animal Violence Act. The new vehicle park management unit of the Colombo Municipal Council was declared open by Mayor Rosie Sinanayaka today. The new unit which is located in Dali Road, Colombo is established to fulfill the requirements of the employees at the office. The Office of the Road Development and Maintenance Unit and the Office of the Drainage Construction and Maintenance Unit are also located here. The government incurred a cost of 88 million rupees for this project. You are under a roof that you can work with respect and dignity. There are facilities to work properly by managing your files and other equipment. Women should be provided proper facilities to balance their office work and household responsibilities. Journalists question about the machines that are to be installed in the vehicle park management unit. Not everywhere. There are some places that the machines are functioning. Some places are still managed by the wardens. We can give the female employees other opportunities by the time the machines are renewed. Machines cannot be installed everywhere. If so, we will provide other job opportunities and projects for the female employees. Yes, we have stopped them all within 24 hours. We have changed and also reduced our fines once again. Speaking at a media briefing in Hatton, former cricketer Mutta Mulidharan expressed the following. Recently, I realized that 45% of people in the country earn a wage of 2 US dollars per day, and that is like 350 rupees. How can a person survive with 350 rupees? Even if two people work, it is not sufficient. They do not even get 20,000 rupees a month. So we are in a situation like that. Our hope is to figure out how to take people out of that situation. It means that you don't have to join politics to serve the people. If you want to do something for the country wholeheartedly, you do not need politics. If people are thinking that politics is not good, they will have to rethink. They are the ones who appoint politicians. <laughs> Journalists also questioned uh, about cricket in the country. 
We were the strongest team for 20 years, but we have lost it now. We have to play a qualifying match to get through to the World Cup. I'm not saying that there are no talented players. I did not go even there to check why this has happened. We have appointed the relevant people there. They are the ones who have to see what went wrong. We cannot stay outside and look for solutions. We have to go in there to see what has happened. We cannot solely blame the administrators. Players are also displaying some hesitation. The Deputy Mayor of the City of Oslo, Kamsha Jinjigunaratnam, called on President Maitri Palasi Desena at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. Kamsi Gunaratnam was elected Deputy Mayor of Oslo by the City Council on the 21st of October 2015. Deputy Mayor Kamsi Gunaratnam was born in Sri Lanka, came to Norway at the age of three and grew up in Oslo. Kamsi Gunaratnam has been the leader of the Workers' Youth League in Oslo, member of the Central Board of AUF and has been an editor of the AUF magazine Praxis. Gunaratnam also has some experience from several bipartisan organisations such as Tamil Youth Organisation and Youth Against Racism. In 2012 and 2013, she was a columnist in local Norwegian newspapers. The deputy mayor has represented the Labour Party in Oslo City Council since 2007 and this is her third term in City Council. She has previously been a member of the Standing Committee on Culture and Education and is currently now in her second term as a member of the Standing Committee on Health and Social Welfare. Kamsi Gunaratnam is committed to political issues that contribute to more democracy, community involvement and transparency. She wants to help enable more people to take part in social debate and spends a lot of time getting input from citizens of Oslo. Are you the best female cricketer of 2018? Sports First, Allianz Platinum Awards 2018. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Primetime News. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.